Kale Teeter. Uh, you've been working in blockchain and with Truffle for quite a long time. Uh, you know, Consensus had a few employees when I started working with Tim and the team at Truffle. And, you know, since then, things have grown quite a bit. And, uh, you know, both, uh, you know, at Consensus, other partners in the Ethereum community and, you know, certainly at Microsoft as well. Um, I'm an engineer that works on the blockchain engineering team. Uh, primarily right now, I'm very focused on dev experience. Uh, so obviously this aligns really well with uh, Truffle and the work that the Truffle team does. And so, um, you know, basically been working on that. I've also worked on quite a bit of our other infrastructure with our partners and first party. Uh, so things like the Azure Blockchain Service, uh, Azure Blockchain Workbench, all the different pieces we kind of built around uh, the Ethereum ecosystem, uh, primarily for enterprise. Uh, but we do keep, uh, as we'll talk about here, once we get started, you know, I've always kept kept a mind on like, how can we make sure these things are still compatible with public uh, so that, you know, we're not uh, cutting off a community there because at some point these communities are merging. I think that's already happened, uh, but, you know, it's going to continue to happen, at least in my view. And so uh, always been keeping that in mind with our dev tools. I'll turn it over to York to introduce himself. Hey everyone, uh, excited to be back at TruffleCon. Um, uh, we've been doing this for a couple of years now, I think. Um, and as Kale mentioned, um, um, he was one of our first full-time engineers in the in the blockchain journey back in early 2016, um, shortly after we co-founded the, the work here. So um, we are excited to be joining back with the community and uh, take you through a little bit of a, um, a blockchain developer plus uh, enterprise perspective on 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 that so um kale i'm gonna keep dropping a couple of things in our in our whiteboard while while we while we talk and i'm gonna go ahead and start sharing this now doing something a little different here uh instead of traditional slides what i'm going to be presenting here is uh we're using this whiteboard which allows you know us to kind of take notes even uh, real time as we're talking through this. Uh, so we'll share this afterwards as a snapshot. Uh, as York said, he's like real time adding stuff to this. But what's cool about that is if there's things that come up and we can put notes in here in specific sections, then we can share that with everybody when we're finished. So we're, we're capturing things real time. Um, York, just give me a heads up. You're able to see that I'm sharing yeah. it because I can't see yeah. the thing. It looks yeah, great. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. So, uh, yeah, we gave our introductions and part of the agenda here is to kind of talk through a couple different things. One of them is the developer experience from the enterprise and, and public side. What What's currently there uh, for those who might not be familiar or are not aware of some of the things we've been up to there uh, in working with Truffle and, and others in this space. And then some of our future thoughts. And this is where, like, from the chat perspective, uh, love to hear, you know, from from people that are on the uh, in the session here, what your thoughts are there, because we have obviously a, an opinionated view on things we would like to see, right, based on what we've seen enterprise customers doing, and uh, you know, but obviously, like it's just our opinion, right? So we'd love to hear, you know, more from the community or others here in the session about that, uh, and then talk through a little bit around some of the new stuff um, with Truffle Teams. Uh, which is a, a, a new product, right? And, you know, some of our current experiences there, and we've been working with the Truffle team on, on Truffle teams. But, you know, basically, uh, again, uh, soliciting feedback, both for the Truffle guys and for us to say, you guys are crazy, or, you know, you should have thought about this too, you know, those kind of things. But these are just some of our kind of views on uh, what we'd like to see there and how we see the future. So basically for the uh, developer experience, I'll just dive straight into that, um, and I'll cut over to some you know live stuff uh, at, at times here. But basically, the idea here is the primary goal was to build some tooling that would essentially allow both new users who are new to Ethereum, who may not understand all the different technology pieces you need in order to build a DAP or to build smart contracts and deploy them, uh, but also not get in the way of advanced users. So for those who have seen me you know, present or, or do videos and things like that. Uh, this may be a little bit broken record, but that's um, that's really a core principle that we're trying to drive with some of this tooling is, uh, you know, support the guys who are new so that we can bring them up and get them into the ecosystem. And, but don't get in the way of the advanced users to say, well, I can't use that because it's just so basic that it doesn't really do anything for me. So, 
you know, basically what we kind of have here to date, and I'll show this live, is, you know, basically we took uh, uh, one of our first class IDEs, uh, Visual Studio Code. Uh, you'll see that here is called the Blockchain Dev Kit, uh, which basically is a, a set of extensions that we built uh, that, that use Truffle, uh, as well as other partners like Open Zeppelin and actually even in like people like Infura, uh, and allow those to kind of be molded together into an IDE to let the developer focus on, I want to build my smart contracts, I want to get them deployed up to the blockchain, and then I want to start moving beyond that. I want to start interacting with the smart contracts, I want to debug with them, uh, and then, you know, some of the future stuff we want to think about is like, how do we do that from a, building the actual DAP? Uh, it's an area we haven't focused on so much in the past. Uh, we've been really focused on like, you know, some of these basic things to begin with is like compilation, deployment, uh, those kind of things. And how do we connect these to different kind of environments? Um, obviously being Microsoft, we have the Azure cloud there and we have blockchain services that are up there uh, that allow people to like connect and deploy things up there, but that's not the only place, right? Um, so one of the things we went through and this was driven a lot by York even was, you know, after we'd put this out here, it was called the Azure uh, blockchain dev kit. And, you know, you know, some feedback there actually from the community was they were a little bit, you know, not just scared, but like, oh, that seems like it's only for Azure. So one of the things we went through was a little bit of rebranding there to basically pull that back and say, no, no, it's not just about Azure. It's it's actually a blockchain dev kit that works for other things. Um, certainly Azure works well with it, but we also want to support all these other things. So you'll see that in the local dev environment, you know, basically it's powered by Ganache under the covers. And I call it blockchain on a plane because basically it allows you to do development, deploy things out just like you would if you're familiar with Truffle using uh, a local dev environment, but it kind of like smooths that experience out a little bit. Um, so you don't have to go like to a bunch of terminal windows to start stuff uh, if you're new to the space. Again, if you want to kind of do that yourself and run your own Ganache instances or whatever, you can totally do that. Uh, we're not going to get in the way of that, but we're just going to make it easy for the uh, initial stuff. Uh, the remote blockchain integration, obviously Azure Blockchain Services, one of those. Infura is another one. We spent time building some integration with them. I'll show that briefly. And, and we can support custom endpoints in there. So others who are in the infrastructure space, uh, who are building things, you know, that we can connect to, uh, you know, as those services kind of light up, uh, even if it's a local kind of environment, you can point to those as well. I'll talk through that a little bit when I show the demo. Uh, but then also like, these are some of the other pieces we get into was debugging. So we hooked into the debugger. Now it is the, the older debugger for Truffle. Uh, we have some work to do there. Uh, that's why I say we have lots more to do here because there's been a lot of advancements there, both on the Solidity side and the Truffle side um, that we need to start plugging in some more features there from debugging. But we have the basic uh, kind of debugging experience there of like, you know, you'll see in an IDE. Uh, then we built some integration with some external components. This first one's a little bit more Azure specific. It doesn't have to be, but it just happens to be because we built uh, some connectors inside Azure. But basically the idea is, uh, and I'll show this in the IDE, you can essentially build a smart contract, deploy it, make sure everything's functional, and then right click and say, hey, wrap that with a serverless function, which basically uh, puts an API in front of it, makes it super easy for you to hit it, uh, deploy that thing up to the cloud, and, and you can have something working there uh, pretty quickly you know, to, to put wrappers around your smart contracts uh, for those big thing in the enterprise space. Um, they always like to have those kind of nice uh, wrappers and things for that. There's uh, on the watcher section, we basically uh, built something called uh, blockchain data manager. Um, and to be honest, it's kind of tightly coupled with the Azure blockchain service. Uh, it's, you can't really point it at arbitrary endpoints. But then others in this space started popping up. Um, one of the ones we've been working with quite closely is uh, Splunk. And they have something called ethlogger, which is uh, very close to what BDM does, uh, which basically is a thing that a service that sits in the background listens to things that are happening on the blockchain. You can think of it like uh, like a blockchain explorer on steroids a little bit because it's not just pulling the core geeky blockchain type stuff. It's actually pulling like things like events, which is much more important from an enterprise perspective. Um, a lot of times when we're building enterprise apps, and York can talk about this in a little bit here, but one of the big things that uh, they want to do is, you know, I, I, I put some business logic in my smart contract. I built these dApps uh, that sit in front of that thing. 
but I also need to interoperate with legacy systems. I need some reporting and things coming out of there. And in order to do that, we have to have, you know, something that's able to pull that off, like from a watching perspective. So that's why we have that. Dynamic smart contract interaction is something we kind of dabbled with, uh, V1, I'll call it, in our uh, IDE. Um, it turned out to be a little bit hard to maintain in the current form that we're doing that. Um, so we built some React components. Uh, I'll show what that looks like. But um, we're kind of rethinking that a little bit. And this is a place where I'd love to get some feedback from the community on what you think, because I have some ideas around how to make that experience a little smoother and lighter weight. Um, so let's, we'll talk through that in a second. And then some productivity enhancers, like getting the ABI and the binary easily, uh, just kind of easy things to do. So blockchain dev kit for the IDE, the serverless connectors is something we've contributed back. And then we also have, um, and we've put these links in here. I think this is a link uh, that you can click on, but we built some community samples, or actually we didn't build them. We basically put some ideas out there and used Gitcoin and a hackathon uh, actually a series of those, to basically build some what we think are kind of building blocks for people uh, who start building applications on top of this. Obviously leveraging some of the tools you see on the screen, but heavily relying on Truffle. So it all kind of comes back to the Truffle uh, thing there. So I'm gonna pop into the IDE here for a second. Um, I'm just gonna pause for a second. If there's any questions, can any of the moderators let me know? And also, can you see Visual Studio Code on the screen? Yes. I can see it. Yep, and okay. I don't, no questions. Awesome. Feel free, guys, to, to throw stuff out here. Hate or love is respected. It's all good. Um, so basically, um, let me pop open a browser here really quickly. Um, so basically, uh, in, in Visual Studio Marketplace, if you just come up here, we can drop a link. It's actually in that um, paper that we were sharing there. This is you know where you can download this. You don't have to come up to this website. Uh, from directly inside VS Code. If you click on this little thing for extensions, you can type blockchain. When you do, you're gonna see a bunch of different blockchain extensions. It's getting bigger, and there's quite a bit of Solidity stuff up here now, which is pretty awesome, right? Um, Juan Blanco was one of the pioneers here, and we have a dependency on his extension as well. But there's others that are popping up here now for like security and things like that. So take a look. Uh, actually, if you search for like Solidity, you should see a bunch of those come up now, yeah. You can see there's tons of them up here now, which are pretty cool. So in Visual Studio Code, basically you can mix and match these. You can say, I want this one, but I want this one to do my security stuff, or in this case, visual development. Um, you can kind of mix and match to get uh, the best thing that you uh, are after. But for us, uh, if you want to take advantage of the stuff we built, uh, we have this blockchain dev kit here. And um, you, there's a bunch of animated GIFs here to kind of walk through the standard stuff, so I won't bore you with like all the normal stuff that we can do. But this walks through, you know, getting started using Ganache, using Infura, uh, if you're doing mainnet or testnet stuff, Bezu, uh, Azure Blockchain Service, all those things. So basically, uh, in the interest of time, I stood this up because sometimes on these Zoom calls, this uh, I'm not sure if it in this video thing it would be slow, but it tends to lag a little bit. So I went ahead and provisioned this, but I'll show you what I actually did. I just opened VS Code. I installed that extension by clicking the install button. You see it's not there now. And then when you come into that, you'll have uh, some new commands up here that you can use. So if you just type blockchain, you'll see a bunch of these kind of things up here. And you can see Ganache is being exposed there. You can see our Infura stuff. Um, and you can see this little thing down here in the corner, this blockchain networks that we'll get to here in a second. But if you click on this new Solidity project, it'll basically prompt you. Uh, the basic project will scaffold out what you see here on the left side. Uh, it just takes a few minutes because it'll just, uh, actually it's not minutes, it's more like seconds. It'll pull down a truffle box essentially uh, and it'll bootstrap a, a wallet for you so that um, you don't have to work with the wallets as you're doing your dev work. You can also like type in the truffle box that you want. If you click on this one, you just get prompted for the box and it will pull that down instead. So that's the first piece, right? And then um, basically when you do that new one, when you do a create basic project, you'll end up with what we have right here which is a Hello blockchain. Uh, you can see all the source code here for our sample. Um, and basically the migrations and everything are set up for you by default. Uh, you'll also see the, uh, the Truffle configuration and this one's already been kind of using an external endpoint, but we'll get to that in a second. 
But basically, you can add new contracts here. You can use this Hello Blockchain one. And you can see that when you right click on it, you get a bunch of context menus here. So we can do things like build the contracts. We can deploy them very easily. Uh, so we don't have to jump to the terminal window if we want to, uh, like if we're an advanced user and we want to pass different commands and things like that, we can totally drop down, drop down here and use Truffle just like we do uh, from a command line today. So again, try not to get in the way of the advanced users, but uh, we also support like the basic users who maybe don't know all these different pieces. This also does a dependency check to make sure that you have all the pieces installed that you need. And uh, you know that's that's the basics for that piece. So when we do a deployment out here, um, we can target different locations. So if I right click and say deploy here, what we should see in a second is we'll see our development network that we can deploy to here. And then we'll also see this remote one um, that I have here. The reason that one shows up is because we got this little thing down here in the corner, which allows us to connect to a bunch of different networks. Uh, I have one provisioned here for the Azure blockchain service. So you can see that piece. But uh, we can also connect to other networks, right? So if we connect to here, you can see we can connect to another local Ganache instance. So if we wanted to run our own Ganache, we could do that ourselves. Uh, we can connect to other Azure blockchain services. So we can have multiple of those there. We can connect to Infura. And then as I mentioned, BDM, uh, the blockchain data manager is here as well to allow you to set up your applications really easily. Um, these things authenticate. So you can see down here for those who are eagle-eyed, uh, you can see I'm logged into Azure over here. Um, that's how it's able to like enumerate this stuff. So whenever I click on Azure Blockchain Service, it will ask me for my subscriptions and then it will ask me for my resource groups that I have out there. And then if there's an existing consortium, we call them, which is a network, uh, I can connect to it or I can create one directly from inside of here. So again, don't have to leave the IDE. I can do everything from inside of here. I can create new consortiums. I can attach to existing ones. If I wanted to um, connect to, let's say, Infura, you'll see I'm not signed into Infura down here. I'm just signed into Azure. It'll say you're not signed in. You need to sign in. Uh, we'll do this live here. Hopefully this works. So I'm just signing into my Infura account and I get my basic you know, authorization that it's gonna access these things on my account. I say, okay. It says you can go ahead and close this now. And when I come back here, I can see my Infura projects. So I have just a dev account, so I can create up to three of these Infura accounts up here. Uh, I can connect to uh, my demo one that I have here, and it will basically show here. I'll do that really quickly so you can see it. So there's my Infura service, there's my project, and then there's my endpoints that exist underneath there. Uh, I can do cool things like copy the RPC endpoint up here, which has the API key in for me. So if I'm building my app, I can easily like attach to that. I can do the same thing with the Azure one. So here's my transaction node. I can copy the RPC endpoint. I can disconnect from these networks if I don't want to use them anymore. Uh, so for in this case, if I didn't want to use this Azure one anymore, or if I didn't want to attach to this demo um, in Fura one anymore, I could just disconnect and it just disappears. It doesn't delete it. It's just like disappear from there. This will also, so when I do the deployment, it will patch in the Truffle configuration. So in this case, this is the ABS, the Azure blockchain one. It'll patch in the necessary parameters. It will also bootstrap a wallet for me. Um, it will prompt me for um, a um, set of credentials or a uh, mnemonic basically uh, for that. And I'll show you what that experience looks like in a second here. Um, and I think that's basically it. Yeah, so you can just do your right clicks uh, to do your deploy and your builds. We have our smart contract interaction we'll talk about in a second. And then we have our microservices, which are the uh, serverless components that I talked about before. Actually, maybe it makes sense to kind of show what that experience looks like because I already have that kind of set up here. Um, so let me pop over to the browser one more time here. So in the browser over here, I essentially have uh, an Azure blockchain service set up here right now. And in that Azure blockchain service, I have a transaction node. So these names should look familiar. I just showed them in the IDE there. Uh, and I can get my access keys and all that kind of stuff over here. I'm gonna have to delete this now because people will try to hack me or something, but uh, that's okay. Um, basically, that's my Azure blockchain service. Inside my resource group, I also have uh, a logic app here. Now, where that came from was essentially inside the IDE, if I say, hey, I built my smart contract over here and I have a constructor and I have some functions inside of there that I can like set or read state, I can basically uh, generate a microservice for that smart contract. And when I do that, um, 
it'll start prompting me for things. Do I want a logic app, a flow app, or a function app? I'll pick my app. I'll pick my uh, address, you know, for where that thing got deployed. Uh, where do I get that address from? Um, right now, we basically just drop it out here in the output. And this is all documented, so don't feel you got to write this down. But um, in our output over here, when we send commands over here, so for instance, when I deployed these contracts, you can see right here is the address for that uh, smart contract that I deployed. So what I would want to do actually is like paste that into there. And then we'll ask me like where you want, which subscription in Azure you're going to deploy this thing to, which resource group, and I can pick those. What's going to happen is, uh, I did this ahead of time. It's going to generate these wrappers for me. Um, so every one of these I can use. So like if I wanted to just do the send request or the send response, because I have two functions in here, or if I want to read the request message or the response message, which are basically get commands, uh, I can grab just that piece. Now, in my case, I just wanted to read the request message. And if you look at... Um, what this is actually doing in this migration really quickly, uh, you can see this deploys the hello blockchain and it passes one parameter called hello blockchain. So very basic. Uh, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna go read that request message. So I just, I grabbed this JSON right from here and all you do is just copy it to your clipboard. I popped it into a logic app up here in Azure, um, which is what this guy looks like. And I'll show you that really quickly in the code form. So this is, I just pasted it in. Um, I didn't make any changes to it. It will then ask you for a connection to your blockchain. It patches in all the ABI and everything. So you don't have to like copy and paste all those pieces over. It'll bring the address and all that stuff over with it. And it puts an HTTP endpoint in front of it for an API dynamically. And then it also has a response. So in this case, it's just gonna echo back the response of whatever that smart contract get call was. To exercise that really quickly, I would basically just do a post to that endpoint. Um, so let's just copy that guy. Now I'm using another extension here inside VS Code uh, that's called the REST, REST client, which just makes it super easy for me to run these REST calls. You can see I can get back, here's all my REST response, and you can see I get back hello world. So um, showing that we actually went and read the state from the blockchain node where that thing got deployed. Um, Sorry, I'm just going through a whirlwind tour of like what's in the uh, blockchain thing as well as like our uh, other stuff for people who didn't know. Uh, this stuff's all out there. There's a bunch of different things you can do out here. There's stuff for data services, which will generate like uh, data schemas for like databases. If you want to like pump some data from your smart contract based on an event out there, there's things for events. So when events bubble up, they would pop through there. Uh, and there's some reporting pieces as well. So you can experiment with those. Um, we added the stuff, as I mentioned, for Open Zeppelin. Uh, we'll talk about that in the future stuff a little bit. Uh, but basically, you can add contracts in here from Open Zeppelin. They're based on categories. So we're kind of blending, you know, the Truffle world with the Open Zeppelin world here of like, hey, bring in some of these like really hardened smart contract things and bring them into my Truffle project that I'm going to use here. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, the smart contract interaction is kind of broken right now. Um, but basically, uh, that's what I was saying. You can see here it, it comes up, but um, we've had some like fits and sparks with it. But basically, the idea here initially was we're going to like basically show the functions that are inside of there. You can type in a, um, in this case, send request needs a request message. If you put response, you would see it's requesting a response message. You can do a transaction. Um, and then you see the response over here and all the metadata associated with that uh, contract down here. Uh, all the ABI, all that kind of stuff. You can copy and paste it, the bytecode, all that kind of stuff. This was like a first pass we did at this. And, um, you know, it's, it's kind of heavy uh, because this is a React component that we have inside VS Code here. So it starts to get quite large. And so we've been working through some things with that. Um, and it hasn't been totally reliable because we have an out-of-band process to kind of manage that right now. What I'm thinking about doing, and this is where I'd love to get some feedback, is based on the smart contract, you right-click here when you say I want to do some interaction. We'll just use the picker uh, that's inside VS Code. So, for instance, you see this kind of stuff popping up here. We would interrogate the smart contract, give you a list of methods here that says, hey, what do you want to do with that smart contract? And you would pick a method, and then it would prompt you for the, the parameters, and then you would say go, and you would see a response pop up here. This is what I'm thinking about doing, but I'm kind of getting into the future section, but um, I just wanted to kind of share that piece. Kale, I, I dropped some uh, diagrams in there also that um, 
that have like some of the architecture and DevOps uh, stuff that we did on World Bank and and other projects. Um, it's in, in the whiteboard to the right. Uh, so I don't know if you are seeing that. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. Here. Yeah. See this stuff right here. Yeah. Yeah. So here's one. Um, this is one we did, and maybe York. I don't know if you want to talk through some of the World Bank stuff. Yeah, so um, this architecture is an example of where like a full end-to-end -end, um, CI/CD pipeline would be really uh, useful. Um, the scenario you get into here is if you don't have an automated uh, deployment pipeline and you're you know consistently updating your code, particularly in uh, before major releases, um, you know it'll take you eight hours to do a deployment. Um, and that was actually the case. I used that number as a real number. It was taking World Bank about eight hours to do a deployment. And so um, we work with them to put together one to you know sort of teach them how to do a full end-to-end -end CI/CD pipeline. Um, and this was a scenario where um, the collaboration between World Bank um, and um, Commonwealth Bank of Australia, um, the code was coming from a GitHub repo uh, owned by Commonwealth Bank, and then it was being moved over into the uh, World Bank's Azure tenant for deployment into production. Um, and so uh, basically, you know, we containerized it, we translated, you know, a bunch of the uh, components to be Azure specific components that complied with the production environment of the World Bank. Um, and so this is just a depiction of, you know, sort of the components involved in that. And it was a, a scripted Kubernetes deployment um, in, in Azure, as well as um, uh, in, in uh, another cloud that that uh, Commonwealth Bank was using. So um, that's sort of the uh, the summary. Uh, I think the thing that would have been useful there would be something like Truffle Teams, where we could actually have uh, a more integrated environment for smart contracts um, versioning and updates. You want to comment on that, Gail? Yeah, I think, um, and I have a section for this at the end to talk about Truffle Teams specifically. But from a high level, I think the the big thing there was, you know, it, at this stage, and this was what was this York like a year and a half ago? We did this. Um, it started in 2018, and actually the term of the bond was a two-year bond. Um, so the bond actually in uh, summer of this year, actually 2020, um, came to term. Um, so it was our work started actually in, in uh, spring of 2018. Yeah. So at that time, we we used uh, traditional like CI CD uh, to try to do this. And so essentially, we reviewed all the smart contracts, audited them, and then basically we had them in a flow. But because this is a lot of money, right, um, there's a lot of like controls that have to be around those smart contracts or anything that happens with those things. Uh, obviously, if there was any kind of, you know, updates as we were going through were those things being vetted and all that kind of stuff and, and moving between different environments like different pre-production environments and production so uh and not to mention this one actually was like multi-cloud so <laughs> yeah uh, on top of the complexity of just doing the blockchain stuff was you know multiple clouds we had to deal with running the nodes on this um so it wasn't a fully like kind of managed um you know, blockchain solution like we see today, it's a little bit more uh, manual effort. So as York said, I think, you know, the more we can help uh, that flow, and I'll talk about that when we get to the team section, some ideas we have around that and some of the pieces we've been talking to the Truffle team about to make that uh, something that's real. Yeah, just a couple additional notes here. This this was running Parity, um, uh, the, you know, the POA from Parity, um, and the cross-cloud uh, secure connection between the two banks was managed through an S-Tunnel, uh, very specific, application-specific VPN. So um, very, you know, two banks communicating with each other over a, a channel uh, is, you know, something that obviously has to be highly secure. Um, and there is another architecture diagram down below, Kale, um, just sort of talk oh. through a full, you know, what a full block, uh, enterprise blockchain architecture would actually look like. Um, I just took a sanitized version of a, a typical stack and, and put it in there. Um, and this has a lot of components, a lot of enterprise components, a lot of Azure, um, Azure uh, serverless components as well. Um, and so if you look at the sort of full blockchain application stack that's on the left hand side here, uh, starting at the bottom of the stack with, you know, the Azure blockchain service, which Kale referred to earlier, 
Um, it uh, is running uh, not quite the consensus version of Quorum yet, but um, that we know that's uh, an upgrade path. Um, we have uh, you know Web three JS library on top of that, uh, and then an API layer, which is the API objects of the ap application specific logic. And this is a uh, supply chain type of scenario. So this is you know the typical things that you'd want to digitize uh, and tokenize in a supply chain, including um, uh, inventory, uh, the documentation associated with that inventory, such as invoices and purchase orders, um, and other types of uh, data elements around a uh, you know a, a supply chain flow. So um, we actually, in this particular application, we capture about 140 data fields. Um, you can see also um, at the uh, above the API layer, there's a traffic manager, which is an Azure component. This basically provides a, permit, a permissioning layer. Uh, into the API so that you can control who has access to the API. Um, and then um, above that, then you've got essentially a presentation layer. In this case, it's done in AngularJS um, for web components, you know, web interfaces, and then also the API access into legacy enterprise systems. And this, you know, a typical supply chain, that means you're connecting to uh, one of various different ERP systems uh, or warehouse management systems. So it could be Oracle, ERP, uh, it could be SAP, it could be Ariba, it could be um, you know a custom home home built system uh, as an example. And then um, uh, obviously on the left hand side, uh, from a security perspective, uh, we've got you know permissions controlled through Active Directory, which means you've got single sign on with enterprise. Um, and then the Azure Key Vault is where we are storing the uh, keys for um, essentially for ETH signer so that we can, you know, have a, uh, you know, a blockchain type of key key mechanism there. Um, on the right-hand side, and, uh, and then I'll pass it back over to Kale, um, you've got basically, as Kale alluded to earlier, um, typical necessity in an enterprise environment to be able to show different types of visualizations about the data. Um, Kale did some wonderful work um, with the Splunk tooling called ETH Logger, which allows us to drop data uh, or grab data efficiently from um, from the from the blockchain. Um, actually, it's better than what we had in the in the blockchain data manager that Kale mentioned earlier. That's why we why we adopted that uh, component. And then you could use either the enterprise version of Splunk, um, or you could use um, you know uh, other tooling potentially for uh, both processing and visualizing that data. Um, you know from an from an analysis perspective. And you can see on the right-hand side here, right? Like, so all the same tooling um, that Kale's been talking about, um, you know, around, um, you know, what, what do you use to do development in an environment like this? Yep. Yeah, and Truffle being one of the key components for the, the smart contract side in the current form. Um, and there's definitely been some work on the enterprise side using things like Drizzle and some of the other application level components. Um, that's an area like we'd like to expand more uh, because, you know, the smart contract thing, you know, especially with teams is, is getting, you know, much more mature now um, so that we can go on up the stack a little bit more, if you will. And let me pop back up here and uh, talk about this a little bit. So some of the future thoughts um, to, to kind of dive in. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Kel. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so talk about some of the future things. Um, as I mentioned before, we want to move to the new Truffle debugger. So that's something that's on our radar. Um, and by the way, the stuff we're working on here, everything's, uh, the logic apps are being open sourced right now. The uh, the dev kit, like all the VS Code extension stuff, that's all open sourced already. So uh, don't feel like this has to come from Microsoft. Um, in fact, one of our Gitcoin hackathons, we actually kind of incentivize people to build things like snippets and pieces like that on top of our stuff to get people more familiar with that uh, because we'd like to, you know, just see that grow a bit more. Um, sorry, York, are you moving stuff here? Um, anyway, so we want to work through that with the Truffle debugger, like put the new stuff in there, some smoother deployment of the serverless wrapper. So you notice I copy and pasted from the IDE over to Azure. We just want to make that single click um, so that people can just like, you know, not have to be copying and pasting so much around. Again, that was more of like, hey, let's see if people use this thing, um, kind of seeding it out there. We had a you know thesis or a, a theory that people would use this. Uh, and it seems like people do like it, so we want to keep uh, building more on that. Um, the different approaches for smart contract interactions, as I mentioned, 
um, I'm open to ideas. Feel free to jump in the GitHub repo. Uh, it'll be in the links here, but feel free to jump in there for our extension and give ideas too if you guys have ideas about how we could do that better. Um, we want to implement and use some more stuff from Ganache, like they're forking. Uh, we don't take advantage of that today, and I think that would be super powerful. Maybe that works just with Teams. Maybe we just use the Teams piece to kind of do that, or maybe we can even do some stuff in the IDE to allow you to attach to basically a live network uh, with your dev Ganache instance, be able to test your transactions with live data without you know disrupting anything. Um, Integration of Truffle Teams beyond local development into a uh, CICD type model. Um, so the idea there would be, you know, we want to not just be, uh, you know, right now with Truffle Teams, the way we interface with it would be drop stuff into a repo, like a GitHub repo, and then that that process kicks off, which is awesome. Like, I think that's a great, great, easy endpoint for us to, like, get into. But, um, you know, one of the things we've been talking about with Teams is, like, how could we get more stuff out of that, uh, like, from the API, for instance, for Truffle Teams. Um, integration of Consensus Quorum that York just talked about. So that's, uh, you know, an enhancement that came along because we were working with, you know, JP Morgan's Quorum. And then uh, since Consensus has uh, taken over that code base. Uh, and so, you know, working with that and any nuance that comes along with uh, upgrades that are happening there. Uh, wallet enhancements for the IDE. As I showed you there, when we were doing those things, we basically bootstrap a wallet behind the scenes using Truffle's HD wallet provider. Um, one thing is we want to upgrade that again to the mono repo version of that uh, wallet provider. And the second thing is we want to put some enhancements there. Right now, we're just storing that's those mnemonics uh, on the local file system or USB drive. But we want to you know add encryption layers there, potentially, and even some stuff maybe for Azure Key Vault. We've been a little hesitant to do that because this is a dev tool, so we don't think that uh, people are in the IDE actually deploying to production uh, with things like keys and things like that. That usually is a separate environment, part of the CI CD, even part of like what Truffle Teams might manage. And so that's why we've kind of you know pushed that one a little bit to the back um, because what we have is functional. It's just like probably not a great way to manage your keys for a production system. And then restructuring the uh, partner uh, SDK integration, I want to show that real quick here. Basically, uh, we've been adding some enhancements into our extension for a while now. And if you download our extension and you look in preferences settings, and you come in here and type blockchain, you'll see we got this uh, core SDK feature in here right now. This is something a little experimental we've been kind of playing with. But basically, you can use Truffle, you can use Open Zeppelin, you can use other kind of backends for your um, your interface. So by default, obviously, things run with Truffle because it's a you know great development environment. But you know if, if people want to kind of swap out pieces of the SDK, and what we're trying to do is like make this extension a little bit more malleable, like where people can, other partners can basically plug into it. Uh, certainly, things like Truffle Teams could plug in here as well, and we could kind of add that as piece as a piece of this. Time check, yeah, we got like uh, 15 minutes, I think, or 20 minutes, so I just want to get through this Truffle Teams piece here, and then we can um, we can have any questions or talk about anything else anyone else wants to talk about. Um, the enterprise workloads, like the way we're doing that right now, as York said, is basically a kind of bespoke CICD type model where we're scripting out what's happening with those smart contracts. We think that Truffle Teams can be super powerful there for enterprise uh, in the future, right? So we can use that as part of our CI CD. We need a repeatable process, obviously, for our smart contract updates. I put that in quotes because obviously it's a new deployment of a smart contract. It's not an update, but we often use like a proxy pattern, you know, with those smart contracts to do that. Uh, and Teams has been, you know, a great tool, right? We've we used it already with uh, enterprises. We've introduced it to Teams inside Microsoft. Um, some of the things we've been talking to the Teams uh, Teams team about has been like for kind of headless deployments where no one's looking at that interface. Um, how can we get some of the metadata back out of there? Um, so that's something definitely those guys are looking at and we've been talking to them about. And then also hooking in like triggers and things like that saying like, hey, if I do this thing in Teams and it's like deploys my smart contracts and runs all my tests and then either something fails or maybe even something succeeds, then how do I hook that into maybe another system, uh, maybe a bigger like uh, pipeline that I'm running or something like that. So that's where um, we're super excited about Teams. Um, we think for enterprise, it's uh, 
it, it's needed, right? Uh, what we're doing today is not something that scales well because uh, everything's bespoke and we think teams can be uh, a factor there that can make that a little bit more uh, common, right, as part of our deployment process. And that's really all I had to kind of talk through here. We'll we'll snapshot this and share this out, uh, these slides and everything, uh, along with the links and everything for everything, and you guys can take a look at it. Certainly, like any of the repos that we share out, feel free to open issues or, uh, you know, if you have suggestions or uh, comments, feedback, any of that kind of stuff around what we're doing here. Um, we're just trying to uh, leverage the power of, like, what these guys, awesome guys at Truffle have been building uh, and make it easier for people to uh, experience it. I know I'm a little early. I think we have like 15 minutes here, but cool. Yeah. Thank, thanks, Kale and York. Uh, if anyone has any questions, feel free to put it in the session chat in the sidebar. Uh, and I'm sure they'd love to answer your questions. I, I did want to speak a little bit on behalf. Uh, you know, you mentioned Truffle Teams a handful of times, and I know we've spoken, and but I haven't seen the the, uh, the blockchain dev kit extension in a while, and it's definitely coming along. I'd love to see maybe, you know, the Truffle Teams sandbox integrated to your networks thing would be kind of cool to see that. And you would get forking, you know, support right out of the box. I think it would be cool to see both, you know, the local version of forking in case someone wants to provide their own forking backend. Uh, but also if you wanted to use Truffle Teams and let us manage that for you, that would be cool too. Um, and then. Yeah, the, the sandbox has been yeah. awesome. Yeah, I think it's super cool. cool. And also, when you were building the Logic app too, and you know, copying that address, it'd be kind of cool if you made your deployment through Truffle Teams. You'd be able to like go say, "Hey, go! I want to make this Logic app, but I want to use it with that deployment on Truffle Teams as too." It'd be kind of kind of cool to build it out from if if you deployed that way as well. Super cool. But I I am excited about the other stuff uh, that it's always been our dream to get to that point of being enterprise ready and being a full CI CD platform. So it, it's, um, it'll be exciting to see where, where it goes from here. For sure. We got to talk at a bunch here, so we'll have to like close people down. <laughs> York, I don't know if you had anything else to add there. I didn't mean to cut you off there earlier, uh -huh. but uh, if there's any other, Enterprise stuff. Yeah, no, it's okay. I mean, I, I you know, I think uh, just to highlight the point about you know having a a realistic CI/CD pipeline that's integrated with um, other pipelines is you know I think for from a blockchain development perspective, it's one of the critical pieces. Um, uh, you know, including having uh, a nice development of a debugging environment, right? So um, there's a number of pieces there that you know I think. You know, some of the work we're doing, uh, you know, that we've shown is really just, you know, begging for that additional piece. So, 